Hey, what's up guys? My name is Alec Garza. Thanks for clicking on this video. Today I'm going to be reviewing and talking about The Green Knight, directed by David Lowry, who did a ghost story, which I actually enjoyed. I gotta be real with y'all. The Green Knight is a conundrum in every sense of the word. This movie was incredibly captivating at times, like a spell was put on me, and at other times it was boring as shit. The movie made sense sometimes, Sometimes it didn't, but for sure it is a hundred percent an art house film that is a creative vision from the director that I think people can appreciate because of how different it is from other movies, but it loses a lot of substance in translation, if that makes sense. It's one of those movies where you watch it and you walk out, you're like, what did I just watch? Or you walk out and you're like, that was weird. You can't even say it's a bad movie, you can't even say it's a good movie. I mean, most people will probably say that's a bad movie because they don't understand it or they don't like that kind of storytelling. It's some offbeat type storytelling where you gotta watch this shit with subtitles, man. It was really hard to understand a lot of what they were saying. It's one of those films where it's visually beautiful. I'm talking like some of the best cinematography of 2021 that we'll ever see, I think. And has a lot of style. It's very unique, like I said. It's direct from the creator's vision. But... The story and the plot suffer because of that. I feel like there's a lot more style over substance. There is substance. And a lot of that substance is found in the themes of the movie, which I really liked. The themes of chivalry, of what it means to be a knight, honor, glory, uh, righteousness. It was very interesting, the exploration of those themes and the deconstruction of those themes in the story. However, I don't think there was enough plot-wise or story-wise to make me fall in love with this film. I love the cinematography. I actually love some of the music choices and the score. There are times where the score is just so enchanting. You're just really captivated and locked in with the movie. And there's other times where it's overblown and overdone, to me at least. Maybe you might be different, but there are some scenes where I just felt, okay, this music's too much. It's really taking me out, you know? I'm pretty sure there's barely any scenes Rare any scenes where there was no music playing or sound in the background. A lot of the scenes were layered with sound and just style and some shots kind of went on for too long and that, that really kills pacing for me. Like you can have an art house film without slow pace. Like you don't need to hold a shot when nothing's being told. You know, I think efficiency is important in storytelling. So I got to knock off some points for that. In other movies, I'm okay with it. But in this movie, I just felt like there wasn't enough story already for you to warrant those long shots and those long holds. And this movie's weird to review because I know critics are gonna love it and I know A24 fans are gonna love it and I wanted to love it, but I have to be real with y'all, I, I did not love it. It did not connect to me in the way I wanted it to. It was enjoyable watching it at some times, but like I said, sometimes it was boring and I can't deal with a boring movie. I, that's one of my biggest gripes with stories if there's any boring parts. And I don't get bored easily, so I'm just being honest with y'all. And for general audiences, I think you're gonna have a tough time watching this movie, you know. I saw one guy come out, man, that was the worst movie I've ever seen. I've, I heard somebody, you know, people giving it a zero out of 10. I mean, it's not a bad film. The film side of it, it's, it's competently well shot, competently well made, well acted, well sound designed. Everything behind the scenes is great. It's just your cup of tea, you know what I'm saying? Do you like long, slow, talky talk scenes with like what does this really mean oh what kind of ending is that wait what um loss you know it's kind of one of those movies where you have to it's like a riddle you got a, a conundrum like i said you got to really break it down you got to watch it again and so that's kind of my gripe with it is that after i spent two hours watching it i immediately understood wow i gotta spend another two hours re-watching it just to understand what i saw you know i need a little bit more finality in my stories and in, in the movies I watch and so that's something I felt hurt the film because it's not a movie I'm so excited to go show somebody you know because I'm having trouble understanding it and a lot of people mistake like oh well you know not understanding it means it's really good or it's super deep it's so deep we can't understand it oh my god it's like yeah but again efficiency in storytelling is underrated like I want to understand or at least feel 80% of the story has been told in a way that I feel has been resolved. There's a lot of characters and motivations that are not fully explored or not fully explained or not fully resolved. And so I'm cool with having a few things like left open-ended, especially the ending. Like the ending being left open-ended was fine, but there were some characters that did stuff that never got explained. Why did they do that? What was the point? And yada, yada, yada. 
Also, it was fun watching this movie to compare it to the original poem, but it does take some liberties and changes a lot from the final act. So if you want it to be per beat with the actual story, it's a lot different towards the end. So just be wary of that. I was uh, kind of shy. I was kind of surprised with some of the twists that they put in and I felt like they kind of left some stones unturned. I felt like they rushed a lot of the ending for some reason. I just, I, it, it came together really well. I got the message of the ending, but overall, I didn't get the entire message of everything that they were portraying in this movie with each character. There are some things that I'm just still up in the air. I didn't fully understand. Maybe because I couldn't hear perfectly what they were saying. I got to watch it with subtitles again. But like I said, part of the problem with this movie is that I'm not in a rush to go watch it again. It was a drag at some times. But it was visually beautiful. It has a lot of pros, but it has just as much cons. The style of the film is where all the pros are. But the cons for me are just the plot, the story, and the characters. I didn't feel like... These were really, really great characters or really complex characters. They were kind of really just quiet characters in a way. But I will say I'm definitely glad that this movie exists. I think it's very unique and creative in the same vein as The Lighthouse and The Witch. But it just didn't speak to me as much as those movies did. But overall, The Green Knight, I'll have to give it a 6.5 out of 10. You can call me ignorant for that rating. I don't think it had enough for me to sink my teeth into... I will probably watch it again and it might affect my score if I watch an explanation video that would probably affect my score but just raw take right out the door right out the theater I'm feeling a 6 6.5 the visual style is amazing and that's a big pro and the sound design is a big pro the music sometimes most of the time is a big pro but sometimes it's like eh, chill out with the music sadly the pacing was a little off and there just wasn't enough for me to sink my teeth into you know I was bored sometimes so I have to really drop a lot of points for that so six out of ten I feel very comfortable with originally I was feeling a five but I had to really think about it and uh, and because the movie stuck with me so long I gave it an extra point I've been thinking about it since I woke up since I last saw it so yeah, that's that's a one positive. It does let you think about it. You will leave that theater like, what did I just watch? And you'll be talking about it for a little while. But that's my review for The Green Knight. Are you interested in watching this movie? What's your favorite A24 film? What's your favorite art house film? What's a weird movie that you just like that you're like, whoa, why do I like this movie? I don't know why. The Green Knight is a movie that I enjoyed for the most part, but just felt like there was a lot missing and I'm not in a rush to go show somebody this movie, unfortunately. And that does affect my scores. Like if someone says, hey, I've never seen The Green Knight, how fast am I like, hey, let's watch it right now. That movie's awesome, you know? I don't know if The Green Knight's a movie I could do that with for people, you know? Especially with taste, but if I had like a film lover friend, Maybe, but that's about it. So, that's my review for Green Knight. My name is Alec Garza. Thank you, everybody, for watching this video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. It greatly helps out my channel, and I hope you have an awesome day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers.